today, you know, the agenda is technology, and we we'll talk about technology in the insurance industry. I'm sure you wonder, because InsurTech is a new word, we wonder, as a person I wonder. Uh, maybe it's not necessary to say that technology, how change and how affect our lives in our every aspects uh, and how change rapidly. Uh, we feel it, uh, it's a part of our life, uh, every day, day by day, uh, digital transformation and innovation, we are feeling it and we are part, it's becoming part of our life in, in Alienable. So it designed the modern life and it designed our life, uh, change our habits, uh, entertainment way, communication, even the friendship style. Uh, I remember when I was in middle school, we were making group study and we were uh, with my classmates, we were going to each other's houses, we were gathering together. And right now my son also is uh, making group study with their uh, classmates, with his classmates. But not, they are not gathering in a house, they are just in, sitting in front of the PC and open the Skype program and then they are doing his job this way. Uh, we have some social media friendship, we have some friends from internet, even we didn't meet before. Again, my son, for example, likes to play PlayStation, and he has some friends from Russia, UK, and they are coming together. He knows their name, they are playing together, but they didn't meet before. And of course, I can give more examples out of my son's experience, actually. But the, the bottom line is technology is changing too much and affects in every industry. Even the, sometimes uh, they change the business model. And the finance area is one of the pioneer area uh, affecting by technology progress, digitalization. We see lots of concrete examples in the finance area. In the last decade, finance, one of the pioneer area, we can see, we feel it. I mean, there are too much uh, innovation over there. But recently, the satisfactory thing is we start to hear about the issue tech. It's a new word, new notion. So here we have respectful experts and we will talk about, we will try to understand what does it mean, issue tech, and what is the digital transformation in the insurance industry and innovation if there is uh, in our industry. So uh, first of all, let me introduce my uh, panelists. I mean, first of all, uh, Chidem Chintulu, she is CDO uh, in Allianz company. And Christopher uh, Naup, he, he is CFO of AXA. And my Chipil, CMO of the Rai Insurance Company. Welcome. Uh, Chinaman, let's start with you, ladies first. And uh, can you tell us about the InsurTech? What should we understand from InsurTech uh, wording? Is it the same thing, digital trans digitalization and InsurTech? Also, maybe uh, because I think you are in the middle of uh, this stuff because you are CDO, maybe if you start, what does it mean, uh, tasks and um, you, uh, as a professional, as a CDO, what does it mean, this title? Because it's a new one. Yes, the reason why I'm laughing is because, uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to be here and to be telling you about digitalization and the insurance industry. And I'm smiling because digitalization, CDO, no one knows what it is. It is one of the unknowns. So there are many articles, and in some articles you might, when you read them, think that the CIO has to become a CDO, or that the CEO has to be a CDO, or that the chief operating officer. So it depends really, and nothing is right and nothing is really wrong. So it depends really on how you position this in your environment. How we position the chief digital officer function in Allianz Turkey is, based on customer centricity. So the first answer would be the short one. It has nothing to do with technology, nothing to do with digital at first, because we mainly care about the customers. So as you have seen, the customer is more and more shaping all industries, not only insurance, but big corporate companies have so far not put their focus on listening to the customer first, because, I mean, it's a corporate company, we deal with our uh, responsibilities and departments, the departments don't even often so talk so much with each other um, because I don't have any time. So the chief digital officer function at Allianz Turkey um, has started or has raised the question, how do we, do we become more customer centric? And what does that mean? First of all, it means we have to understand who is our customer and there are various customers, the end customer, the intermediary, the agent, the employee, everyone, became a custom, everyone can be a customer. But more importantly, to become customer centric, we have to work together. Do we really sit together in one room with all the departments, break the silos, and put off our functional head 
and look from the um, perspective of a customer. Usually we don't. Usually there are fights like this. The actuary wants to ask one more question because he wants to give the most precise price. Sales says, you can't ask that question. My customer want, doesn't want to answer. Operation wants to uh, make sure there is no fraud. So how do we bring all this together? And there's not an easy answer, but there's a fun answer to that. If we accept that we haven't been so far very customer-centric, and if we accept the fact that we have to become like that because there are more and more startups that address these pain points and that then are named as um, insurtechs or fintechs, and if we don't act like one of them, and if we don't become more agile and talk to each other and um, shake our structures and what we have, how, the way we have done business so far, then we, can, we may become well be overridden by one of these startups. So they, so they can become a competitor or we can really collaborate together. And um, the fun part of my job is that it's an invisible job that I'm trying to bring together all the different teams and then work on the project we have decided to focus on, whatever that project is, and to make it as digital or as customer-centric as possible, as fast as possible. And most of the time, customer-centric means that the customer wants something anytime, anywhere, it wanted it yet, the, he or she wants it yesterday, fast, and that's then where, where technology comes in, but as a second driver. So we then ask ourselves, okay, we now know what the customer wants, what is the technology that can support the customer in this? And because in the cross-functional teams, IT and BA and operations and sales and marketing have been in the process from the very beginning, they already have the solution. It's not like business is <clears throat> sitting and then saying to IT, hey, IT, I have a job for you, go and do it. It's, it doesn't function like that anymore. You involve them from the very beginning. That's the you, that's long answer. Uh, my, uh, based on Chidem remarks uh, and explanation, I mean, you are CMO, so market, yeah, you are familiar with customer needs more than any else, at least. So how you say uh, that, uh, is it help for the, uh, this digitalization or InsurTech could help the uh, customer needs satisfaction? Well, thank you. First of all, uh, I can sense the stress of having the latest uh, speak just before the lunch. So I, I promise I'm going to keep it as much as short as I can. Uh, I would like to start by telling a little anecdote uh, which I experienced recently. Uh, when I talked to one of my colleagues, uh, who's also executive in the insurance industry, and I said that I'm going to attend uh, InsurTech, FinTech uh, conference as a speaker, he said to me politely, uh, oh, you're a CMO, Mahir, and you're going to talk about InsurTech and technology? I mean, I, I really can see the, uh, his eyes saying this, come on, you are making marketing and you are going to talk about technology? Unfortunately, I see this misreading from the market a lot. It's not something rare. And when I look at the details, background of this misreading, misreading uh, actually I see two things. Two concepts are changing. Consumption behavior on the one hand, and technological developments on the other hand. If you look at the consumption part, actually we are witnessing a dramatic change of power from corporate side to customers. How first, as customers, we can reach information much more easily, if you look at it from a historical perspective. But I think more importantly, again as customers, we can produce content, information and again easily. I think that is the reason behind that power shift from corporate side to customer. So on the one hand, as customers, we are so strong. On the other hand, complementary of this thing, this change, we have huge dramatic changes in terms of technology. Just close your eyes and think about the keywords of the technological change Ch changes sur surrounding us. Just do it. Industry 4.0, Internet of Things, augmented reality, virtual reality, AI, blockchain, sharing economy. It's a lot. It's a lot. And combination of these two, which are interacting each other, changing consumption behaviors and increasing speed of technological change, Actually, it's shaping our today's world and changing tomorrow. So because of that 
from that perspective, I see marketing, I see customer as the heart of change, or let me say, revolution in insurance industry. And technology will be blood of this change. As a conclusion, I would like to say that if you look at the sales cycle, pre-sales, sales and after sales, at each stage, I see at the center customer, surrounded by technology. And Christopher, uh, what are the biggest drivers uh, for our industry uh, in terms of insurtechs? Thank you. Good, uh, good, uh, good morning. I think the, um, I see three big trends. I think the first one I think was already touched base by my two, uh, two friends about uh, what we sell, how we sell, all this customer centricity, uh, which is a big, uh, big uh, new trend in uh, insurance. But what is um, will disturbing us, like incumbents, existing insurers, I think is the pace of the change. I think we used to be able to cope with incremental changes and, and cope with the change. I think now with uh, connected cars, uh, driverless cars, Internet of Things, I think the pace is increasing. And I think it's, I see it as an opportunity for, uh, for us to, uh, to innovate faster. And the third uh, big element is I think the startups all the, maybe the insure tech. I think they are nimble, they are fast. I think the technology is, uh, allows them to, uh, to reduce the barrier to entry. And now we are uh, competing with, uh, with uh, startups or partnering. Um, and I think that's the, the third biggest trend. When we talk about digitalization and uh, innovations, we have seen a lot of examples in other industries. I mean, we feel we are using in our lives a concrete way. For example, I don't go to buy a CD anymore. There is a Spotify or Apple Music. Uh, also, we just listened to the bankers before this meeting, and uh, there were respectful bankers. <laughs> I think few people is going to a uh, classical traditional branch for the bank transaction. There is an uh, internet branch, and everybody is doing Even if we can uh, make our transaction from the smartphones, right? The smartphones it just uh, replace the, for example, bank branch. So we see lots of uh, examples in other industries. But I'm not sure that the insurance industry, we didn't reflect this technological change to the customers. Is there any uh, concrete example, good uh, implementation in the global level? Or maybe if it's not confidential, what's your company uh, strategy on this? Is there any specific example? Uh, the, the, the, the technology will change about the uh, products or the way we, we buy the uh, insurance products. Yeah. Let's start with you, um, Like I'm um, building on the previous question, like we said, um, customer behavior is shaping now the products and the processes we are developing. And for, um, we know that the customer does not want to answer 10,000 questions anymore before they get the price, which is out of their reach, for example, and they are not interested anyway. So already insurance is as well, like similar to banking, not an industry which we dream of, like every day, what insurance product should I buy today? That's not how we operate. And then we do it mostly because we have to. And when we have to, we are already skeptical, and then there's this long process in the end to find out Oh, okay, I, I didn't trust them, I shouldn't have trusted them at all. So that required us, for example, to change the complete business model around in the places we could. Fast quote. Fast quote is um, Allianz Italy, is, has been the pioneer. Now we have also implemented in Turkey, also many other countries have it. What have we done? So we collect only two pieces of information the plate, um, the plate and your ID number, to then auto populate is with, with a data center where you can get the other 25, 26 variables to come up with a final price. And it, it didn't used to be the final price. It used to be really a fast quote indicating the price range you could pay if you are interested. Now it's our, we are so advanced that it's almost the final price. And then if you are interested as a customer, you can decide, yeah, okay, it fits my budget. I'm interested and I need to uh, purchase a Casco or NTPL policy. Uh, why do I not call my agent? Then you have the options. Either the agent calls you, or you call the agent, or you purchase it online through, over an, through an agent, and it makes life easier. So, to your question, it's maybe not a um, Skype, it's maybe not a Spotify yet, but it's already going into the di right directions. What about 
Yeah, I think many, many things will change. I think uh, GDM mentioned about uh, how we sell. I mean, you go to uh, an agent, uh, you ask uh, five pages of, of questions. So this has changed a bit because now you can, you can buy online, there is some uh, comparators. But at the end, it's, it's very similar. You know, it's not a big, uh, big change. I think tomorrow, you will not be asked any question. Mm. You, we will know, we will be able to assess uh, your risk. If you look at the UK, there is a, a well-advanced company called Admiral. They are using uh, the post on Facebook to see whether you are a good or bad driver. And they use that to price the risk without asking you uh, all the usual uh, questions. I think also what we are selling will change dramatically. Um, for instance, AXA in the UK, we are partnering with uh, Trove. Trove is a startup which is a repository on when you buy something, you can put it on this, uh, on this app. And you can now uh, insure, for instance, your camera for one day. Let's say you want to go for a trip. You say, okay, I want to insure this, uh, this product for uh, one day. So I think insurance will be able to be turned on and off as you uh, use it. Also, I think there will be new things of, uh, to be insured. I think uh, we discussed about Pokemon. I mean, today when you hunt your Pokemon, uh, I think you're insured when you walk and if you, uh, if you fall on the streets. But once you catch the Pokemon, I think tomorrow you will be able to insure them. If something happens to your Pokemon, you know, it will be, uh, it will be insured. So I think all, um, all of that are avenues for insurers to, uh, to develop. There was this massive uh, cyber attack over the, the weekend. I think uh, cyber insurance is something which is developing uh, extremely fast. I like this Pokemon example. Even Michael couldn't do that. <laughs> they, they couldn't think maybe unknown, unknown. And this is, uh, came, yeah. What do you say, Maish? Oh, well, following the payment laid by my colleagues, uh, I would like to focus on a bigger picture. Uh, and uh, I would like to talk briefly about the need for change uh, of the fundamental dynamics of the insurance industry. As I just mentioned, there's a huge pressure uh, that will come from consumer behavior changes and technical developments. But on the top of that, actually, if you look at the core dynamics of the insurance market, regardless of those changes, we need change. Recently published, uh, an insurance report by a consulting company defined insurance industry as a market which has not changed for 100 years. It's a very traditional market, it's a very conservative market, and to be honest, we have to confess that we are a late bloomer market in terms of following trends. I think there are some reasons, some natural reasons behind that, because first of all, we are dealing with risk. Since we are managing risk, it automatically makes us conservative. Other than that, in terms of distribution, we have a B2B2C model. So unlike our cousin, banking industry, we cannot t uh, reach, touch our customers directly. So because of all these reasons, actually, I see uh, insurance markets uh, as a latecomer in terms of changing, adapting its core business models. So first of all, I think we need to redefine ourselves by rediscovering our customers. For example, from my perspective, from a marketing perspective, I don't see insurance companies as insurance companies. We are companies, we should be companies managing risk by providing technological solutions. That's, that's my vision for insurance companies, actually. And if I look at some concrete examples from the market. Yes, we have some good insurtech examples like French insurance, simple insurance in Germany, Covic Analytics in the UK, Insure the Bucks in the UK again, Lemonade in the USA, the uh, most striking example of insurtech. But I think still we don't have, we are lacking of disruptors in the market. But it doesn't mean that we will not see experience huge radical changes of the uh, traditional business model of insurance market. Yeah. Yeah. If I can add one thing to this. Um, for example, you are saying we have to use um, technology. Of course, we do have to use technology. I totally agree with that. But 
people what they do, uh, what we men, we, everyone does. What technology do I have today? What can I do with that technology? That's the wrong approach. So instead, technology should be really supporting what the customer, what the new needs of a customer. For example, I've seen, I don't remember which insurance company anymore it was, it's a startup. Um, Intratech probably, so um, a commercial. I'm flying from New York to Istanbul. I have a um, luggage that has a chip, chip into it. That chip is linked into an ecosystem to my insurance company. Before anyone else, my insurance company is aware that the luggage has, has stayed in New York. When I arrive in Istanbul, before anyone else, they know. And I receive a message and say, Dear, I receive the note. Dear Cheetah, I'm so sorry, your luggage is there. Don't worry, your claim is being paid, have fun, go shopping, and I will call you tomorrow to see if uh, you have your clothes or not, or how you're feeling. So this, for example, if, if you design something like this, you never come to a design like this, I would claim, by thinking which technology I should I be using. What's the need of a customer? How can I be making the life of my customer easier by, by fixing the processes of my core insurance policy? I will have to pay that claim anyways. So if I pay that, uh, pay that claim, three, four, five, six later, or if I pay it like immediately, will it make a big difference in the eyes of the customer? Yes, it will. It will position me as a love brand. It will not position me as someone who is doing their job because I have to. And I think that's how we have to think more and more. And maybe by doing so, we have to partner with startups and yeah, be faster. Yes, I think we, we also try to give back uh, information to customers. You know, we have so much information in insurance company. So in France, for instance, in AXA, we try uh, to give in if the weather is bad, we will send messages to the customers, you know, please make sure your house is properly closed, uh, you, uh, there is a curtain, etc. When someone is driving, we say, okay, look in this area, in this, uh, on this route, there were X uh, accidents, please uh, slow down. So we use type of, uh, like when you use a Google, uh, Google uh, Drive, uh, you can see areas where there have been uh, dangerous, there have been accidents, so we try to give uh, back some information to customer to create a different uh, experience and something uh, more than just uh, you pay uh, your policy and if you have uh, an accident, you get some money back. Mm. Yeah. Talk about digitalization. Uh, we think of direct uh, contact with the customers. And uh, especially when we look at the research uh, published recently, we see that end customers are willing to increase uh, buying or searching for insurance products from the internet. Uh, based on this uh, research, for example, 50% uh, of the German and 40% of the Italian and Switzerland uh, people are uh, searching internet, using the internet in order to search for the <coughs> right product and uh, half of them also buying product from the internet. But uh, when we look at our market, uh, you know the, our market is uh, mainly driven by the private agents and we don't see too much these trends. Uh, so we have uh, some other dynamics. So considering our market uh, dynamics uh, situation as an alliance, what kind of uh, strategy you have for the uh, agents to prepare the digital transformation? Can you tell us a little bit yes. about this? Yes. Um, as you said, um, the, the, the thing you have described we call ROPO, research, online, purchase, offline. So there is this trend in Turkey really that more and more people are researching online but in the end, they want to go and purchase their product offline because they seek security. And it's true that um, in the insurance sector, especially in Turkey, is still um, uh, sold uh, by intermediaries, like almost 80%, between 60 and 80%, it's being sold through agents. And as Allianz, the policy of Allianz Turkey is to go the digitalization road together with our agents from day one. So we have to digitalize together in order to become more customer-centric. And um, going back to focus, which also was mentioned in the previous panelists, <coughs> when we started the digitalization in um, late uh, 2014, end of 2014, we said, where do we digitalize first? And we look at all of our project portfolio. And given the fact that we are really intermediary-dependent company, we said, well, how are our agents doing? How are the the big portion of our intermediaries who touch the customer stream. And we realized they have lots of pain points. And then we decided to digitalize our agents first to go to start with, um, with them the journey. And we have created a new um, digital platform where our agents can do all their transactions from A to Z with one single username, one single password from um, any time and anywhere. And the beauty of this is that this was our first example where we involved the customer, in this case the agent, from the very beginning. We listened to them, we told them we want to make life easier, 
And in the beginning, they were skeptical because they were like, how many times did we tell them we are not happy, you, and so why should you be changing now? Well, because we now realize there is an insure tech, fintech world, we have to change, we have my life, you have to make life easier for you. But it was hard to believe for them. So the first workshop they joined, they were not really very happy, but we have done NPS scoring systems, so how happy are you after the workshop? So after the first workshop, they were happy, and then they said they want to come to the next workshop, and then to the other workshop. What we have done is we have designed together the screens, in the next workshop, we have reconfirmed this. Then we have done an online survey, sent it to all agents to see if we have addressed the right points or not. And in our executive meetings, we have informed our agents that we have started this journey together. It will not be perfect. It is agile. We have to act fast. We will be um, coming up with releases, little small releases, and then um, fix it as we go. But what we have promised them is that we will always be listening to them and fixing our systems as fast as we can. We have even set up a separate hotline. And today, the thing they were very skeptical about, they are really very happy, and, and that makes us really happy. In fact, we have a short video about this. Okay. If you want to, we can, sure. um, if we have time, we could show sure. the video to see. And with this video, in fact, what I want to show you, what I would like to show you is that it's really about the human touch and about listening to the customer, and the technology is really only an enabler, because we didn't know which this technology would, we would be doing <coughs> that. That was really secondary. Okay, it's it's going to be a good example because when we talk about digitalization, every time we are talking about sales and everybody understands sales, but actually this affects all process. Yeah. It's better to understand, to see this video maybe uh, because it's a discussable mm -hmm. uh, topic actually. Yeah. So can we please play this video? Melike Göker ben. Nişantaşı İstanbul'da yaşıyorum. Alyans'ın 25 seneden beri ajent alanı yapıyorum. Adım Hande Önal. 2008 yılından beri ajenteyim. Tek alyans ajentesi olarak çalışıyorum. Aile şirketimiz Yalt Sigorta. Yaklaşık 27 senedir bu sektördeyiz. İlk 10 ajenteden bir tanesiyiz prim üretiminde. Birden fazla ekran kullanırken tek bir ekranda her şeyimizi sonuna kadar takip edebileceğiz. Bir platformumuz oluşmuş oldu yani. Bir kullanıcı ilk defa girse bile bu dijital portala nasıl kullanacağını çok rahat anlayabilir. Dijitalden önceki hayatımızda zaten çok bölünüyorduk. Şimdi hepsi bir araya geldiği için daha kaliteli bir şekilde bir kere bilgilere ulaşabiliyoruz. E, onun sonucunda da zaten e, daha rahat satışa çıkabilecek noktaya erişebiliyoruz. Elinizde bir rapor olması ve e, önünüze koyduğunuzda e, bugün bir önceki seneye göre nerede olduğunuzu görmek bir tıkla bile olabiliyor bu platform sayesinde. O yüzden çok faydalı bir platform. Her duyuru beni ilgilendirmiyor. Ben tarım sigortası satmıyorum. Belki de hiç satmayacağım. Tarım sigortası duyurusunu görmek istemiyorum. Yani ben bunu tıklayamıyor muyum? Favori duyurusu yapamıyor muyum? Diye bir şey istemiştim. Bir de önemli kampanyaları görmek istiyorum. Kampanyanın neresinde olduğunu bilmek istiyorum diye iki tane öneride bulunmuştum. Yani şu an çocuğum gibi dediğim bir kampanyalar bir de favori duyurular burada duruyor. Şimdi en basit örneği bu. Ya yani ben çok memnunum. Yani her şeyi burada görebilmek, uygulayabilmek, kapınıza gelmiş birisine anında poliçeyi kesip vermek. Bırakın kapısına gittiğiniz birine kesip poliçeyi, mail attım size bu da makbuzu vesaire demek. Yani bunlar bizim için tabii çok çok çok inanılmaz avantajlar. Gerçekten o postitleri vesaireleri hani yapıştırırsak al bunlar bir kere çok keyifli. Oyun oynar gibi bir şey yaratıyorsunuz ve rahatsınız. Bu şekilde çalışmak son derece zihni özgür kılıyor. Bizim grup daha iyiydi diye hatırlıyorum, diğer gruptan. Ama güzel fikir dedik yani öyle evet ya bu çok güzelmiş dediğimiz bir fikri yoktu. O yüzden demek ki bizimki daha güçlü. Benim için hani hakikaten olmazsa olmaz bir şey oldu. En azından bir %15 bir artış olduğunu söyleyebilirim. Ortalama bir %10 zaten bizim satışımıza artı yönde etkilemesi oldu muhakkak. Eğer dijitali bir kere kullanmaya başlarsanız zaten bırakamayacaksınız. Bence herkesin kesinlikle kullanması gerekiyor. Dijital çözü bir hayat söz konusu bile değil. Christopher, you know, uh, you know the two markets. I mean, you're French, and you know French market industry, insurance industry, and uh, you are in right now in the Turkish insurance industry. Uh, considering you know the two market, can you make a comparison between two market in, in terms of insurtechs or digitalizations? And uh, second question for this, uh, as we know that one of the uh, key drivers is startup uh, in order to make digital transformation. Uh, and when we look at the statistics, 63% uh, of start startups in U.S. market, and 10% is in German market, 5% is UK. 
And I don't know the exact rate for the Turkish market, but the rest of the world is around the other uh, countries. So it's very low. What should we do as the old stakeholders to support startups in order to start transformation on the digital or insure tech uh, concept? I think I'm, I'm very optimistic because I see a lot, a lot happening in, in Turkey. Um, I think there is more and more investors, more and more uh, startups. We at AXA we work with uh, local uh, local startups on some projects. We have, for instance, one one project which is around uh, fraud analytics. So we work with a local uh, startup where we we give them access to uh, some of our data and they use uh, machine learning to try to help us identify which claims are more prone to uh, to fraud. And actually, this is helping to increase uh, our fraud detection substantially and uh, saving quite a, quite a big amount of, uh, of money. We also have a, a project ongoing with one startup on uh, telematics. So it's around the pay, uh, pay as you drive, which uh, allows us to um, better assess the behavior, the driving behavior of customers, and then progressively to build some products which will be more uh, linked and differentiated to those, uh, to those customers. Um, we also try to uh, reinvest also in some of the local startups. So we are, in, we are investing in some of the funds which are uh, invested uh, here. I mean, some of the banks have, uh, have, uh, have funds now. I think we had a 500 uh, uh, in, the, in the room earlier. I think they have a fund here called 500 uh, Istanbul in which we are investing uh, locally. And they are also presenting us uh, some of the startups to see whether we can uh, collaborate either here in Turkey or in other markets in, uh, in, in, in Europe. I think in AXA, what we try to do is we, uh, we really try to, uh, to foster innovation. I think we have um, one a lab in, uh, in Shanghai and one in, uh, in Silicon Valley to try to, uh, to see uh, trends and uh, identify entrepreneurs, technologies. We also have uh, an incubator with roughly 100 million, 100 million US dollars. We have also a VC fund now with close to 300 million uh, US dollars uh, with offices in uh, London, New York, San Francisco, Shanghai, Singapore. Um, and we also have one unit just dedicated to partnership because we don't see uh, those startups necessarily only as competition. Mm. We think they can bring us and we can grow uh, together. So that unit is helping us also locally to uh, build uh, partnerships. So we have uh, partnerships in, with uh, BlaBlaCar. I mean, obviously in Turkey it's quite small, but in, uh, in, in continental Europe it's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite big. And we have uh, a number of those type of, uh, of partnerships. That's also how we develop this partnership with Trove in the, in the UK. So, while to, maybe to your first question, yes, I think there are maybe, we are maybe more advanced in France than we are currently uh, here in, in Turkey. But I think the ecosystem is in place uh, in Turkey for this to, uh, to catch up uh, very, very fast. I was based in Asia before uh, being here in, in Turkey. And I think what I saw in Asia over my uh, six, seven years there is uh, how fast they accelerated and they made the technological uh, jump. And today, if you go to China, uh, their platform, their system, bank, I mean, we discussed about banking in three earlier, is much, much better than what we see in France and what we see in Turkey, even if in Turkey, I think the level of uh, uh, digitalization is already quite good on the banking industry. Maybe not on the insurance industry, but on the banking. But in China, it's even much, much better. Yeah. So <coughs> Turkey could be the, uh, okay. the okay. next China. Mm. And my last question is for you. Uh, you are as a professional of our market, and we have a, a very chronic problem actually in the market. As you know, that the Turkish insurance uh, market potential is very high, but uh, somehow we, we don't turn transform this potential to the kinetic. I mean, our baby industry never bigger, uh, maybe decades. So, uh, do you think? The, I mean, our uh, penetration rate is 1.5 to the GDP, and uh, compared to the developed countries, it's 8 percent <coughs> to GDP and per premium uh, for per person $150 and compared to the developed countries it's like $5,000 and $8,000 uh, at this level. So uh, do you think that this, this digital transformation, customer-centric products or uh, tailor-made products will help 
uh, our industry take off? Is Thank it, you. Is it an opportunity? Thank you. Uh, actually, I'm smiling because uh, I have been hearing this growth potential of Turkish insurance markets uh, from the very first day I stepped into insurance experience, which was 20 years ago. Uh, we all do, we, we have that same story, same growth story, actually, all the time, uh, because of a main motivation. In terms of economic size, we are the 1717 largest economy around the globe. But if you look at the insurance production, we are the 38th largest market. If you zoom in and look at the per person insurance consumption, we are the 68th largest market. So there's a gap between the economic size and the insurance production. Actually, that is the reason why uh, we always see a growth potential in this market. From one perspective, yes, by adding some new innovative products, we can uh, reach some part of this growth potential. For example, as a little commercial break, as Rice Squirt, we are going to uh, very soon launch a new product, uh, an, an ID safe product, uh, which provides coverage for ID thefts, not only for physical uh, theft issues, but also for the cases uh, in which you lost your identification information on digital platforms. So by providing that kind of innovative products, yes, we can put something on top of the existing market uh, size. But if you ask me to reach, to get the real potential of the Turkish market, we need to uh, do something like uh, Industry 4.0. Getting inspiration from that, I'm saying that in, as insurance version 2. As I early mentioned, because of the consumptional, behavioral changes, technological developments, we really need to re-establish market dynamics. And it's not just getting, buying cutting-edge technology, putting the latest software or hardware. We really need to re-establish everything as insurance companies from scratch. Not putting technology on top of what we have in an existing form, but building from scratch by using technology, technology and customer at the heart of it. So, just before the lunch, uh, if you'll have one sentence from this panel, uh, I would like it to be, customer will be heart of revolution in insurance and technology will be blood of it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as Mahir referred to much lunch, so I don't want to uh, take you too much time. I think you are hungry. And uh, I am start hungry to, to feel hungry. Uh, we have two minutes. So if you have any Q&A, if you have a question for the Q&A session, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Thank you. Mohamed Rashidi from One Global. All the technologies today are trying to make the perfection. So in the genome industry, is trying to make your health better. And the IoT is trying to prevent accidents. So this revolution that is happening, why I need to ensure if everything is going well? So do you feel that this industry is going to continue or is going to be part of uh, the fintech industry? Banks would have it as one of the packages for what left out because the technology is growing to try to fix things that you are try to assure in case if it happens. That's my question. Actually, I can answer if you want. Well, I'm an instructor at university as well, and when I'm teaching fundamentals of marketing class, for the very first day, I ask class, what do you buy when you buy a drill? It's a cliche marketing question. If you know the question, just to keep it, but if you don't hear it, just think about it. When you buy a drill, what actually you buy? From customer perspective, actually, I'm not interested in drill. What I want is a hole, a hole in the wall. So I really enjoy, I like your question. We should ask this question to ourselves as insurers. That's why I said we should redefine ourselves by rediscovering our customers. Because customer is not interested in drill machine. They are looking for the hole. And 
At the age of these consumption behavioral changes, technological changes, we are experiencing something different than yesterday. We have to fast to catch those changes. It's not anymore issue of big fish or small fish. Now it's issue of fast fish and slow fish. If you look at the Fortune 500's list of 1955 and compare it with the list of 2016, just make a guess, how many of the companies disappeared? Pretty close one. 88% Eight eight of the Fortune 500 companies disappeared. And because of that, because of all this dramatic change, yes, it may be a big question for this market. And I can add, actually, uh, I like this Trump's explanation, known unknown. This is a known unknown. When the technology change, and maybe, yes, it will be perfect, but still we will have some unknown risks, new type of risks, we don't know yet. Insurance will cover this type, this type of risk. Besides, there, is, there are very traditional risks that, I mean, the digital transformation or science couldn't find a solution for the die, dying, for the death, or fire, anything. So every time risk will be appear, so every time insurer will be appear as soon as the world is available. So don't uh, scare for this. Is there any other question? Thank you very much. Onur Varan Çağlar. Uh, maybe all of you know that new generations, they are loving the love marks, love brands. Like maybe the last example is Tesla. Tesla included the, all the car insurance services and all other things. So we are talking about the uh, insurance companies with the B2C manner, but we need to think about the B2B2C, like these new startups, new fintechs. I think insurance company need to be based or touch their products to the new, uh, new startups because the new generations are following those. Did you answer that question? Did you answer that question? No, not really. The, the voice is a little bit low, it's coming here. So the last, the last sentence uh, we, I miss. Uh, maybe insurance the insurance, said, insurance company, uh, always we are talking about B2C. Yes. Manner. But we need to think about the B2B2C, like uh, startups and all the fintechs, because new generations, like exactly the K generations, maybe you know, they are loving the new startups and the new love marks. So we need to think about those. Yes. I yeah. think we talk about startups, so it's. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, car, uh, first of all, to the first question, I think, for example, car insurance maybe is the most simple example of uh, what is changing in the industry. If uh, cars are driving themselves, is there still a place to, uh, what do we need to, uh, to insure? So I think the market will be much smaller, the traditional market will be much uh, smaller. There will still be some liability type of, uh, of, uh, of insurance. But I think we need to uh, then to evolve maybe into uh, trying to uh, be, do more risk management, risk consulting, you know, on, uh, on the fleet of cars, you know, uh, what are the... Um, the behavior and how we can uh, we can still optimize in those uh, in those fleets. So I think there will be a big shift in the in the coming years. Maybe less less fast in Turkey, but in a more uh, developed world, for more retail type of uh, of uh, market to more uh, co co commercial motor type of uh, of market. Uh, I still think there will be some risk to be uh, to be insured. Maybe less on the on the motor side, but if you ask people, do we live in a less risky world or not? I think most people will still tell you risk is increasing, whether it's climate uh, type of risk, whether it's terrorism, whether it's cyber terrorism. I think there's a lot of new risks which are emerging. Uh, and I think the challenge for uh, incumbents is to be agile and try to, uh, to develop the products and the means to, uh, to ensure this type of, uh, of risk. Uh, do you hear me? I think. Uh, dear participants, as a Secretary General of our association of the insurance markets. Every day I, I'm coming to my job and I'm focused on how I can, I mean, of course I cannot do myself, but I'm just think about this. How, how, how we can increase our market penetration rate? How can we, what, what should we do in order to catch the developed countries level? Because uh, insurance is very helpful in terms of fund creating, in terms of coverage and everything. So I believe 
maybe this digital transformation or technology is a challenge for lots of industry, but it's a big opportunity for our industry because we have very young and talented and using uh, technology uh, generations. So we are lucky as an industry, as an industry stakeholders, if we could transform these parameters, this technology challenge, this generation, because these guys are really like used to, uh, used to like technology. I don't want to give my son example again. But I mean, if we catch, if we match these two parameters together, we can jump. Uh, to the develop levels. Uh, that's my last comments. Uh, so thank you for uh, listening, for patience. Thank you so much. Okay. It was a very good debate. Thank you. So it's lunchtime. Bon appetit. See you in an hour, please, or you're going to miss all the show. Thank you.